my 2019 Ford Fiesta. So here we are in my 2019 Ford Fiesta. This is my fourth car I've ever purchased. Um, definitely not the fourth car I've ever driven. I bought this car brand new in October of 2019. I bought the car for $15,000. Uh, right around there is where the loan came out to be. And I think the vehicle price before processing fees and all that was a little around, I think 13.3 or something like that. And my monthly payment is 225 a month. It's now April of 2020. I've had this car, what is that, almost six months or so, right around there. Um, I've done my first oil change on this, which I was able to knock out in about, I'd say, 20 minutes. I've already rotated the tires twice just due to the fact that I do a lot of burnouts and clutch kicks and stuff like that. Um, and it eats through the tires really fast. This car is the SE. Um, I did. I should have bought in the ST. But then again, if I bought a brand new ST, it'd be $25,000. If I bought a used ST, it would have been the same price as this, but then I would have to deal with a used car, which I'm definitely not afraid of. My three previous cars were all used and two of them worked. The third one didn't work out. Uh, just That's a whole other story. That's called my Dodge Dart for a day story, which I'll explain later. But my first car was a 2004 Jeep Liberty JK Sport. Once again, base model car. That thing was awesome. I love that car so much. It had a lift kit, bigger tires, and stuff like that. I never, I never put anything that was expensive on there. I was I'm still a teenager, so everything's dirt cheap for me. So the tires were all used. Uh, I just kept swapping old Tacoma tires. I worked at a Toyota dealership when I still had that. Um, and I just put Tacoma tires on, on my 16 inch rims. And that worked out for the most part. I mean, there was the occasional one with a nail in it and I would have to patch it and stuff like that. Um, but I had access to all those tools and it was easy to do. The next car was the 98 Volkswagen Golf that is now a 98 Volkswagen Gruck sitting in the garage waiting for shift linkage. And the third vehicle was a 2015 Dodge Dart Rally Edition. Um, it was a six-speed manual. I forget what size engine it was on. It was a four-cylinder. Um, I had that car for one day. One day before I bought this car. It was a weekend before I bought this car. It's my birthday weekend. Again, that's a story for another time. I've had six jobs in the last four, no, no, no three years of me working um, since I've joined the workforce. I joined the workforce underage, under a work permit from my state, and it just eventually spiraled into everything. So I've done, I've done food service, I've done sales, I've done lifeguarding, I've done automotive technician, I've done quick loop technician, Ballet, shuttle driver. Oh, I'm up to seven now. Point is, I've done a lot, been in a lot of positions. Granted, I don't keep those jobs mostly longer than six months just because I either get bored of them, management goes to shit, or I just want something else. I want to try something else. So I leave for ODU, Old Dominion University, here in August. Um, so I'm not that far from leaving for college. So you'll see me on a college student budget working on my cars, whether it be by myself or with other people that I meet. I have people around here um, that will be in some of these videos. That 
it's twice now I've had to pull over to readjust that. So I have a friend Solomon, he owns a G4 uh, Mitsubishi Eclipse. He and I go to pick apart every once in a while together. I have another friend, Josh, uh, he owns a, oh gosh, I forget what year, but I'm pretty sure it's an R52 um, Mini Cooper S. So he's most likely going to be the one to assist me with the whole uh, supercharger build I'm doing for the Gruck. Got another friend, I got two friends named Alex. One has a Mazda 5, yes, the MPV, the little uh, minivan thing. That thing is cool as hell. He's, de he's decked out the interior and stuff like that. And the other Alex owns, uh, I think it's a 90s, late 90s Civic. Um, that thing's sitting on some cool wheels and he's putting a, I'm pretty sure he's manual swapping it if it's not already done. Um, anyways, he's got a kick-ass Civic that I like. But enough about everybody else's cars, this is about my car. One of my cars. This car has the 1.6 liter uh, naturally aspirated with a cold air intake, which doesn't necessarily pull any cold air because it's just sitting out in the open. I bought uh, an air box at Pick Apart the other day so I could chop it up and fit it to uh, sit on top because there already is a stock uh, hood scoop type of thing already uh, on this car. It just pulls air from in front of the radiator so before it gets hot and stuff like that. So I plan to repurpose that with an induction filter. Let's talk tires real quick. So I've burned through these tires in less than, let's see here, less than 7,600 miles. They're already down to the warning uh, part of their tire where it says, oh, you only have two 30 seconds left. And I have two 30 seconds left. If you know me, it does not take long for me to burn through tires. I drive hard, I clutch kick. What I really like to put on this car is either some Federal 595s or some Nitto Neogens. I know Nitto, I know Nitto Neo Gens are meant for cars with a little bit of stance, um, so that way it deals with the with the camber. All right, I've been talking for the last like three minutes, and the camera cut out. Something else I've done to this car is coil stiffeners. I want this to be rally spec. So if you're young, you go into AutoZone, you got your first car, whatever. You're into like four by fours or rally spec type stuff. You need your car to have ground clearance, so you want to put a lift kit on it. But you don't want to pay two hundred dollars for a lift kit off of eBay or off of Amazon. So you go into AutoZone, you walk to the back towards the trailer lighting section, and there it is. You see it. Coil spring booster. Now, if you got a truck, you're gonna to want to put a lift block and stuff like that. I mean, that's the cheap way to do it. The best way to do it is to actually get proper shackles, proper leaf springs and stuff like that if you're doing a truck. If you have independent suspension, you're gonna want either a strut spacer, longer struts, or in my case, a coil booster. I ran a coil booster that sat under the coil um, in the Jeep, but in this car, I wanted to get a couple more inches. I was hoping for two or three. And that's a lot for these stock axles to have that angle to them. But, you know, I said, screw it, let's, let's see how this goes. So I bought the three inch coil boosters, just the little ones that are, I think, I think they're like 15 bucks a piece or something like that. But what's crazy is that the, the one inch spacers and I think the two inch ones as well are only like seven to ten dollars. So to get three inches, twice the amount of one and a half inches, you gotta pay twice the amount of money, which I did. So 40 bucks in ish, 45 bucks, right? Oh no, more than that. What's 15 times four? 60, 60 dollars into this. And I've managed to lift the vehicle a half an inch. But in doing so, it has made the coils way stiffer. So I had the thought process of putting ST uh, suspension on this car. I'm going to do an ST uh, brake swap because I have rear drums and I really want rear discs. But the issue with putting ST suspension on this car was that the ST suspension is already an inch lower. It, it's lower from stock, but it is way more stiff and it rides better. I've managed to do that for $60 instead of going to pick apart pulling ST suspension or going to Ford Performance and buying brand new ST suspension. And I've gotten what I want out of it. 
The car is much stiffer, it's well more planted, but the only downside is, is that all the force that was absorbed by the suspension when I'm going through turns and have body roll is now all to the tires. So I have virtually almost no body roll now, which is great. I feel well planted in this car. But of course, with all front wheel drive cars, you gotta deal with the demon of understeer. Now, understeer is not the most terrible of things. Oversteer it could be worse if you don't know what you're doing. I've experienced both. I prefer oversteer over understeer. Understeer is easier to make tires squeal and stuff like that when you have a front wheel drive car. But oversteer is where it's at, man. I could get the Jeep to oversteer on a rainy day almost around any turn because the tires were always bald. So just the slightest bit of throttle input, tires break loose, now you're sideways. Great, you're sideways in the Jeep that's been lifted. That was awesome. I remember coming out of an intersection one time, um, just real bad rain, um, and I was completely sideways. So I overcorrected, now I'm completely sideways the other way. I did that about five or six times. Granted, at this point, I had mastered over steering in that car. I was just doing it for fun. Then again, I am swerving between three lanes. Well, there's barely any traffic. Don't do this. But I did it. I had people honking at me. I had people try to, when I got to the next light, people like stopped me and was like, hey, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm great, man. How are you? And he's like, I saw you over steering. I'm like, yep. That was intentional. Understeer makes it really, really easy to mess up in this car. Um, on ramps aren't fun when it's icy. Then again, they're never fun when they're icy, no matter what car you're driving. But I much prefer rear wheel drive over front wheel drive. Front wheel drive is really easy to do burnouts in because all you gotta do is rip your handbrake because your handbrake locks up your rear wheels and it holds you in place. Then you just drop clutch in first gear and just floor it. Granted, you may drag your rear wheels 10, 20 feet, but it makes it really easy to do burnouts. But if you do this in a rear wheel drive car, if you don't have line lock, which is you just lock up one set of brakes, whether it be the front or the rear, and you try to go for it, you have to stand on the brakes and floor it at the same time after dropping clutch. Um, and my Jeep, my Jeep was an automatic. Um, my first manual that I owned was the Gruck. But in, in an automatic rear wheel drive car, you just stand on the brakes and you floor it and you hope you don't split your transmission in half. And that's exactly what happened to the Jeep. I blew out the rear main seal and I blew up the torque converter in that car to the point where transmission fluid was constantly leaking on the exhaust, catching fire about every 30 minutes of driving. So at that point I got out of there and got into the Fiesta after, of course, my Dodge Dart for a day. But I am now enjoying the suspension setup I have on this car. I don't think I'm gonna do anything too crazy to it other than still continue to try to lift it. The only other thing I can come to think of is the exhaust modification I've done. Um, you can hear it's a little bit more rowdy. I have a Flowmaster muffler that came off of a Tundra that I intend to build an exhaust system for this car with. But all I've done in the meantime is I've, I've tried it before, um, the whole washers uh, between some gaskets thing. It works. I had three inches of washers on the Jeep. That thing sounded loud as hell. It was awesome. This car I tried, uh, I started with three washers and it was just so loud in the car you couldn't hold a conversation. You couldn't even hear the music at full blast. I went down to two washers and it was a little better. You could start hearing the music, could barely hold the conversation. Now I'm down to one washer and it's done it perfectly. The car sounds angry. It's not overpowering to the interior. It's not overpowering to the outside. Now, depending on where the car's at on idle, whether it's cold or the engine's hot, there is a fair amount of heat shield rattle. But well, once that heats up, it's all taken care of. So 
between the induction from the air filter and the exhaust note from the gap, I think it all rounds out pretty well. I'm excited to, to hear what it sounds like once I take it from, I think this is like maybe a two inch exhaust stock and uh, move it up to a three inch with a Flowmaster on it. Yeah, I think that just about sums it up for the Fiesta. I haven't done much to this other than do cosmetic work. Just decals, door trim, stuff like that. What started out as a stock SE Fiesta has now turned into this cosmetic mess. Between the sequential turn signals to the Honda roof rack, AutoZone red wheel guard, O'Reilly's mud flaps, more Chinese stickers, and who could forget the plastic dip hood stripe? Not to mention a fine tape job. If at all possible, I do intend to supercharge this car. I plan to own this car outright uh, here in the next couple years after college. I will never be able to sell the Gruck just because it is what it is. This Fiesta is my first brand new car and I will never buy a brand new car again. I've made that financial mistake now. From now on, I will always buy used, whether it be $300 or $3,000. Anyways, thank you for watching Jay's Ride. This has been Jay's Ride's Fiesta. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what you'd like to see. I'm here for your entertainment, your automotive extreme entertainment. If you want to see more burnouts, I can get a car that will do burnouts. If you want to see more project car stuff like the Gruck, go ahead and let me know. Go ahead and turn your notifications on so you know that anytime that we post, there's something new for you to watch. And always, stay safe, turn traction control off, and have fun.